So you mentioned two things about immutability and anonymity, privacy yeah. on, on the blockchain on Bitcoin. Can we hope for backwards privacy when true and anonymity protocols come into Bitcoin that unlink or kind of hide what's ha the link they have with fiat currency right now? We can't. We can't fix the bad operational security of the past. This is actually a critical problem. And one of the reasons it's a critical problem and has to do with how do we choose to use anonymity enhancing technology or privacy enhancing technology? If the privacy enhancing technology is voluntary and seldom used, then the fact that you use it is itself a red flag. Right? Does that make sense? Right. So, for example, um, let's say I want to use a defensive technology, purely for defense, body armor, right? Okay. So if everybody's wearing body armor, no problem. If I'm the only person wearing body armor and walk into a bank, people are going to make assumptions about what I'm about to do. <laughs> right? Do you see what I mean? If I'm the only person wearing a, a motorcycle helmet, body armor, and walk into a bank, they're going to make very strong assumptions about what I'm about to do. If you're the only person on the network using CoinJoin, the fact that you're using CoinJoin says that you're doing something for which privacy is a very big premium. And of course, that could be something completely benign or even desirable in a moral society, like you're a whistleblower or you're a political activist in a totalitarian regime. Or it could be something nefarious, right? You're a stalker or a domestic abuser, and you're trying to buy a gun on the dark market to shoot your spouse, like something horrible. The, the bottom line is we don't know, but the very fact that you raise that red flag is dangerous. So if we do privacy, the best way to do privacy is in a way that it is always on by default, and, and you don't know if you're using it or not. The good model is the difference between PGP and SSL. PGP fails because not enough people use it. SSL succeeds because you don't know you're using it, and there's no way to turn it off. Like if you wanted to turn your browser so that it doesn't do SSL, you're like, no, no, I'm not going to the secure site. I'm going to type in HTTP, and you type in HTTP, and the website redirects you to the SSL site. You're like, oh, come on, do I really have to do privacy? Yes, you do. Right? So on by default for everyone is a very powerful privacy model. One of the reasons that Taproot, TapScript, and Schnorr signatures were combined in one proposal is because Taproot masquerades every transaction as possibly being a script or possibly being a simple pay-to-public key. And you can't tell what it is. And in many cases, you can execute the script as a pay-to-public key, like, for example, closing a lightning channel, and nobody can tell the difference. And that's really powerful, because if we then lead to adopting that, then that privacy is used everywhere by everyone. But here's the problem. If you went and you bought Bitcoin from a place where you showed ID, that transaction was inextricably linked to all future transactions originating from that address, and through statistical clustering, it points right back at you. So if you went and bought something you know, that's not yet legal in Scotland, if you know what I mean, um, sure I don't. then that can come back and bite you in, in the future. Right? Um, so the problem with backwards privacy is you can't bridge that gap. So what we're going to have to do is, one, make sure we fix this before a lot of people join the technology, so that new entrants come in with full privacy. The other thing is a change in the culture around Bitcoin. I've been saying for years now that the best way to get crypto is not to buy it, because it's not an investment. It's to earn it through your labor. I get paid in crypto. I don't show ID. It doesn't go through an exchange. It's not tied to my identity. When I get paid privately by other people directly in crypto, and then I pay my staff directly in crypto, it doesn't get converted to fiat. Fiat is not part of the biggest chunk of my business. More than 50% of my business happens in crypto only, crypto in, crypto out. No identity connected to it. Perfectly legal where I live at the moment. Right? Um, that means I'm not touching the exchange surveillance endpoints. 
and and that gives me a much higher degree of privacy.